Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at an abstract game for mainly two players. This is Brothers. In this game, the players are going to be fighting over space, over land, in which to put their pens with their specific animals. And the very first thing they'll do is lay out the land, the board, on which to play. After that, they'll go ahead and populate that board with their tiles, try to play out as many as they can, score, and then switch sides and play one more time, adding their scores together. Let me give you a look at how it goes. We'll come on back up here. I'll tell you what I think of it. To start the game, one player gets the Wabbit pens, one player gets the Gobball pens, and you've got the land tiles out there. You're ready to begin. Whoever has the Wabbits is going to begin. They're going to take one of these tiles and place it out on the table. The other player will then grab one and add it themselves. And this will continue back and forth with the players alternating, playing these tiles however they want to, as long as there's at least one side that is adjacent to something previously placed, like that or like that, however you want, until the board has been fully built. And then you are going to take turns deploying your actual critters onto the board. Beginning once again with the Wabbit pens over here. You are going to play this anywhere you want to. It just has to cover three spaces in a straight line. And so this player might play uh, here, let's say. And then this player might play there comes back to this player, they play here. This player plays there. And this continues until the players are no longer able to deploy their pieces. Um, once that happens, then the other player will finish. So for example, let's say after a while this player has... the player playing the Wabbits here is no longer able to play. Well, the player playing the other pieces could then go in and finish up some of their placements that they've been able to cut off of the board where the other pieces simply won't fit. Once that's done, if you've got any left, so let's say this player has uh, four they couldn't place, and this player has one they could not place, then you are going to score points. Points are bad in this game. You're gonna get one point. If you are the player uh, using the Wabbits, you're gonna get one point per tile, so one, two, three, four. If you're playing the Gob Balls, two points per tile, so two. Once that's done, you then clean up the board, you reset everything, and you are going to trade tiles. So this all breaks up again, you are going to build it once more, this player gets these, this player gets these, you again begin with the player with the wabbits, placing tiles until that's all done, and again playing your cre creatures here until they uh, have all been played or you have to pass. You add your score from the first round to the second round and whoever has the lowest score in the game is gonna be the winner. And that is Brothers, so let's talk about it. I'm gonna start with thematic ties. The game, as I said in the intro, is basically an abstract game, but it does have a theme slapped on it and I think it's a cute theme. I think it appeals, or it's going to appeal, to a lot of people that would otherwise overlook the game if it was simply, you know, white pieces versus black pieces, something more traditional like that. So while the theme here is thoroughly abstract, uh, or the gameplay rather is thoroughly abstract, I, I find the theme is a nice idea and it works well. So I give this a tentative thumbs up for uh, going that extra mile a little bit. The aesthetics, component quality, artwork, fantastic. The tiles are thick. They are uh, well illustrated. They really are very high quality. So thumbs up on that. Replayability. Does the game give you new things to discover from play to play? And does it scale well? Let me talk about the scaling first. The game really is two players. It says two or four, but all you are doing with four players is splitting the tiles, so you get six, your, your uh, partner gets six, and you alternate seating around the table. And that's it. So you cannot discuss with your partner, and then you play the exact same game. That works. It's fine. It's not really a four-player game, though. It's a two-player game. So cute that they went ahead and, uh, you know, put that those rules in there, but it's really not a four-player game. It's a two-player game with a small variant that allows for players to share the pieces. 
the new things to discover parts. I find the game's replayability to be pretty low. Once you've played this game a few times, there's not a ton of discovery. There's not a ton of aha, gotcha moments. You know the things to watch out for, depending on what, which side you're playing. And you um, are going to be a little bit on autopilot. In fact, the part that is uh, most interesting to play in the game is the setting up the board, which is not to be dismissed. It is part of the game. But the actual deployment of tiles almost becomes, um, you know, automatic or second nature once you've played the game a few times. Game length. Is it interesting the whole time? Does it get repetitive? I think it's good because it's 15 minutes or so. So you get to play basically twice. One time as one type of piece, the other time as the other. And then you're done. And you add up your scores from both. Boom. So no, it's it, it's not repetitive. I find the game length is suitable for what you are doing in the uh, in the play itself. The ease of play. Fiddly, is it, are there any extraneous rules? Is it a game that's easy to teach? Absolutely 100% easy to teach. The game is very clean. It's very straightforward. There are, There is nothing here that could have been cut out. So I like that. If you are someone who appreciates simplicity in game designs, if you are someone who wants a compact, clean package, then yes, this is going to give that to you. And then lastly, tactics and strategy. I find the game to be very tactical, of course. A strategy here is, um, I mean, you, you'll, you'll be reacting to the moves your opponent makes. Depending on which kind of piece you are playing, you are going to attempt to develop the board in a different way. Going for places where you can, for example, if you are playing the gob balls, the, the L shapes, you want to create corners and spaces where your opponent cannot go. You can cut that off. And now you've got a place that's just for you later on. You can guarantee a deployment in there. But again, literally one play in, you'll know all those things. So, yes, there's some tactics, but there is no developing, uh, uh, you know, identity for this game. Everything this game is going to give you, it's going to give you in 15 minutes. So, I, I feel like uh, this is sort of a... You know, if, if you consider a game to be, let's say, a you know, fantastic game, to be a blockbuster movie, then this game is a very well-produced commercial. You know, it takes a few seconds, it impresses you, you go, oh, that's cool, I like that, it's attractive, or it's interesting, or haha, that was clever, and then you forget about it as soon as your episode starts again. So that's my biggest complaint, I think, is that the game... Um, it's just not going to have a lot of staying power. It's exceptionally well produced. I love the artwork. I like the play of it just fine. It's just a game that is not particularly original. It does not uh, make a lasting impression. And so therefore, I think it's one that you're likely to have something already that does a similar job, possibly better. Maybe not. And if not, then you know maybe this is one for you to consider. But you've seen these kinds of mechanisms and ideas before. One last thing I want to mention is that I do find, as did the other players, that playing as the gob balls, the L shapes, is simply more interesting than playing with the uh, straight pieces. And so you are going to have half of the game where you might, it's possible, you'll, you will not be as engaged in being tricky, you know, in pulling fast ones on your opponent. Because you are simply trying to get those long pieces laid out. But you can't You can usually be too clever when you are attempting to do that. So there is that. Overall, this game's not bad. I thought it was, again, particularly well produced. It's attractive. It's a neat little package. I'm just worried about replayability here. And uh, a sense of um, feeling content when you... You know, we're continuing to feel uh, contentment after you've played this a few times. And then what? You know? So, there you go. That is Brothers. Nice game. Pretty forgettable, unfortunately. But hey, if this is singing to you, then definitely give it a shot. Because you, at this point, really should know. There is nothing else to discover here that you, have, that, that you haven't seen in the video. So, thanks for checking this out with me. I'm Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.